Welcome, thank you very much for joining. Today what we are going to do is that we will present uh, some of the features or if we have time to cover all the features that we have in our new mid service X version 3. This version was uh, released in August, so there's already quite almost a month that uh, since we released it and uh, it is always good to share with you, with all our customers, what are the new features in order for you to be sure that you are using all of them, okay? Then, of course, if we have time, we will do, we will um, talk about what's coming next in the future. Ready? Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so first of all, let me introduce uh, our agenda for today. For, for some of the people that, uh, and customers that are just starting to, to join uh, Main Service Desk, we will do a company pre presentation. It's always good to share with you who are we, what we do, our experience, and all this information, okay? Then later we will do a um, short explanation of our offer, the solutions that we provide, the difference between the free and the enterprise version that is a common question from our customers and many, many things. Okay, then uh, full jumping into what brings us uh, here today that is uh, talking about mid service desk version three and what's next for the next uh, releases and um, for a time for questions and answers. Okay, thank you very much. So let's just start. Uh, so uh, mid service desk is owned by a company that is called OPGK software. Uh, it was founded uh, in 2011. We have more than 10 years of experience in the IT business doing uh, projects around the world about different uh, um, solutions. Basically, our core business is uh, service desk and ITSM solutions, IT outsourcing and development. We have other lines of business too, okay? Um, after being uh, an expert of more than 10 years of doing ITSM and service desk implementations, integrations and uh, custom development in projects around the world, we decided that it was time to create our own system. So that is how Min Service Desk, uh, service desk started almost uh, six, six years ago with a new vision, as you all know, um, easy to use, flexible with uh, modern architecture, fast, of course, and always try to, to, to make it as simple as possible, including all the new functionalities and also uh, focusing on an on-premises version and also offered uh, a managed or cloud version, okay? That is that part. I'm sure that you know that you are able to download and install our free version. And then if you want to have the, our enterprise features, uh, you can do it with a with an upgrade of the system, all right? So uh, the current version right now is 3.02. We have right now 11 languages in the system and the services that we provide uh, with our team is uh, service support contracts, uh, consulting uh, to help you on the implementation, developments, of course, training, migrations or, upgra or upgrades from different systems, okay? We have, we have offices, uh, the main headquarters are based in Poland. We have offices covering all the time zones to our customers uh, for the support for in Mexico, in Canada, in South Africa, in Malaysia, and in New Zealand. Okay, good. So to continue, um, now we are going to talk about our solutions. Our solutions uh, is important because uh, I am part of the account management team and also the consulting team. And more, uh, many uh, customers come and ask me like, hey, I downloaded the Mint, I am using it, but I want this and these features and I don't understand what is on premises or managed and so on. So this is uh, perfectly understandable. So let me just give you an explanation. Basically, uh, Mint Service Desk comes in two versions. It's Mint Service Desk on premises, this means that it is going to be hosted and located locally in this, in your servers. You have a server or a virtual machine in, uh, from your IT department that they will uh, create a new one with an operating system. And in there, in your uh, network, you will install Mint Service Desk, okay? That is on-premises. When we, when we talk about on-premises, that is uh, the, what we refer to. Then manage means that it's uh, everything is handled 
and administrated by us. We have um, some um, agreements where partners for uh, Azure, for other data centers. So we will be handling your instance, your server, and doing all the administration, the installation, everything. So in that case, uh, the customer is only uh, using the solution and forgetting about the technical part. So that is the first one, the two versions on premises and managed good. And then these uh, options, also these versions come in two editions. We have the free edition and we have the enterprise edition, okay? The difference uh, between this part is that um, um, the enterprise edition has uh, exclu exclusive features that the free version does not have, okay? If I jump here, you can see the details that uh, the main service desk free is, uh, is uh, the version that includes the service desk, the asset management, survey, and knowledge base features. All those features are included in main service desk free completely. And it's, uh, the system is open up to 50 agents. That is quite a lot. That is 50 agencies for companies around 1,000, 2,000 employees at least uh, for support. Unlimited customers, unlimited tickets, unlimited assets. So uh, that is what main service desk free is included. So you can download it, install it, and this is what you get. If I go back to the previous uh, uh, slide, if we talk about enterprise edition, it's like what I just said, but plus the access to the API to integrate the system with, with other systems. Automation that will come in version 3.1, reports, uh, just a dedicated section to get more reports and dashboards that we are continuously improving it uh, every day. And uh, time accounting, I will show you that uh, to date also. And Facebook Messenger as an additional channel of communication. If you remember, when we talk about Mean Service Desk, we offer uh, two important parts. On the user, end user, or customer side, uh, customer portal to be able in many different channels, multi-channel, to communicate and report all uh, his problem, the request, and so on. And on the agent side, to put everything in just one place to easily manage that part. So that is how, why a uh, Facebook Messenger is a new channel. All right. Then, of course, um, uh, main services enterprise is offered for um, on-premises solution uh, based on a service support contract or in main service desk managed. Um, main service desk uh, free is only available for, for on-premises, of course, okay? I've, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is a bit uh, uh, confusing. Don't worry, because I have an image that uh, explains everything. Finally, just to talk about our, our consulting services and what we provide is that for the uh, free version, we have a lot of customers that they start with the free version. With uh, and we help them with consulting services and trainings to to show them how to to implement the system. We do the implementation for them. They learn how to do it, and then later, once they 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 are using the system, then at the moment when they need the the enterprise features, that's when uh, they they uh, acquire the enterprise edition, right? And then for our uh, main service desk enterprise edition on premises or managed both, then. We offer consulting, we offer custom development, we offer trainings, we offer, of course, these additional features. So uh, for uh, we, are, we encourage you to use either one or the other, and you know what is the difference and what is uh, needed in the other one. So then uh, just to, to put everything together, the, uh, we have uh, main services on premises on the left, uh, managed on the right, both uh, share Mean Service Desk Enterprise, that includes consulting, development, training, support, migrations, and updates, and includes automation, API, time accounting, Facebook, reports, and more will come, of course. And here is the world for Mean Service Desk Free, where we offer consulting and trainings, okay? Very good. So please, definitely, if you have any questions related to this, and you are not sure of what exactly do you need? This is common. Uh, we have a very experienced team of uh, management and consulting that the first part is that we 
we sit down together to you, uh, with you, we analyze your needs, if you already have a system or not, is it your first time, how deep you want to go on the ITSM world, if you have some certification, how big is your team, many, many of your needs, this is uh, our evaluation workshop. And then based on that, we say, hey, you know what, uh, you should start with this or with that, and we create a path like with our other, uh, of our, um, the rest of our customers, because we have customers been using the system since the beginning, long, uh, long time relation. Okay, so please feel free to contact us at sales or in the in our website in order to talk more in detail. And also, if there is a need, we can have a dedicated demo for you. Very good. Okay, so let's just continue in the rest of the of the um, of the meeting for today. This just to fire to 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 end into what I was explaining about our offer. These are our example of our yearly subscription super packages. So what I was telling you is that for our and main service desk enterprise on premise edition, in order to get access to the enterprise edition, to support and other stuff, this is the way to get it. We have different levels of, of support. As you can see, it depends on the response time, on the service window, on the updates, on how many ticks per year you have, and so on. So we have uh, different packages for um, for all our customers and all your needs, okay? And uh, this is for on-premises. But when we talk about uh, managed, uh, in, in order to know how much uh, resources we are going to provide into the instance, uh, for each one of our customers, we have to measure it per per agent. So then if you need uh, uh, 10 agents will use the system or 25, 50 or more, you can contact us and we can provide a quotation based on, on your needs or on the amount of agents. As you can see, there are all, here are, is different. It's depending on the storage, on what is the support additionally that you will get based on the other slide that I show you, basic support, professional support, and the recovery time and so on, okay? So please feel free to contact us uh, for more details about pricing. Now, continue uh, on the on our topic uh, for today. Uh, we will talk about what's new in Mean Service Desk 3, okay? For that part, uh, I will first uh, talk about the enterprise features and then we will jump, jump to, the, to the rest of the features. So um, we can make a difference. First of all, time tracking, okay? Let me just wait a second. I will share my screen. Okay, so now I'm sharing our demo system. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about our time tracking. This is very useful, uh, the part of time tracking, because um, apart from the rest of the fields, uh, one of the things, well, this is a hello world, but let's just do this on order your laptop or any other ticket. So I'm pretty sure if you join us before, um, on our previous webinars, you know all what we have here. Uh, later, uh, please uh, take a look on, on the rest of our videos, or as I said, we can give you a dedicated demo. But let's just focus on 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 our main uh, goals today: time tracking. So there's a lot of uh, customers that they have from time to time vendors, consulting, freelancers, or some developers or there is some use case that um, uh, I cannot solve it solve it uh, at the moment, and then I need uh, somebody to, to do some, some, some work in order to make it. And then for that, I need an estimation because I want to know how much it will take you or how much it will cost me, and this kind of examples, all right? So let's say that this ticket goes to a third level of support, that is development. So I want to know how much time it would take. So the developer will come or, uh, or the vendor will come and say, you know what, this took me, or this is going to take me two days. And then probably let's, uh, it's a matter of an approval. Yes, okay, uh, two days is fine. So please start working. So then I will take this ticket and I will assign it to that person, okay? So he will start working. Probably there's a need for some internal communication like, hey, send me the statement of work. Uh, what do I need to do here and so on. So this is also possible. And 
and so on and working. So then how is this time tracking? It's combined the estimation with the spend time. Spend time is where you will tell uh, the consultant, the developers or, or, or this person. Okay, please here uh, record uh, all your all your needs or all um, your activities, okay? Good, so then uh, with that, I, I can say as an example, okay, I spent two hours. When was, this was yesterday, doing what uh, I was preparing the VM, all right? So you can also add a dictionary from, from our custom fields to define something that let's say, uh, this is just an example, of course, but this is consulting, development, documentation, testing, and so on. So I will say, uh, this is uh, development, okay? So then I will click on plus. And then as you can see, it, it says this user, spend this time, this date, uh, doing what, and the time. And then I will close it. I will continue doing my work and so on. And then next day I will come back and I say, you know, it took me 30 minutes. Today I was doing what? Some testing, right? Uh, this was testing part and then plus and so on and so on as you can see you can add the rest of the of the um, of the um, uh, activities and so on what happens is that the system the ticketing uh, part uh, main service desk is doing uh, mm, the sum of these activities as you can see i type two day two hours and 30 minutes and then everything is just, just one part and so on if you if i keep doing it it will keep at end at the moment you close the ticket, that's fine. But it is also important that, let's say, right now, um, I will do this like, okay, um, I will do just an example, all right? I will say that it took me two days doing what, uh, I will say, uh, documenting or something like that. And then it's documentation or whatever. And I click on plus and I close the system. And as you can see, the system automatically makes the sum, but also uh, put it in red. Why? Because this means that it is going more uh, or above the estimation. So this helps you a lot on many things that it was estimated uh, not properly or that we need to buy another uh, bag of amount of hours because we run out of hours of development and so on. So this is, more specific that later you will know the very, very detailed what was uh, charged and how it was configured, okay? And then later, of course, uh, work on the on the uh, business side about this. So this is what uh, we are talking about time tracking. Good, perfect. Now uh, let's go on the rest of the list. Uh, we have uh, time tracking reports and automation and API. Automation will come in the next version, but I can show you some stuff about uh, reporting. Then as an example, I will be here. Um, there's plenty of things to do. As, as you know, there's many steps on the reports. We have to understand two things that where uh, this is something that is common when, when we talk to our customers. First, you need to define what is the idea of your reports. Of course, uh, we know that there's plenty of uh, standard reports based on IT like, SLAs like breaching uh, escalations, incidents uh, per um, per month, uh, problems, assets, relations, many things. That's right. But uh, based on the experience, there's also something more specific for each case uh, on the on the customer. So we are also open to discuss on what exactly our customers need or, and as a matter of reporting, okay? And then we are going, of course, uh, the first thing is that uh, based on, the, on this feature that is on the enterprise part, that is the API, definitely we have done many integrations with a specific uh, um, systems for VI because definitely one of the things that we all know is that there are very powerful tools, uh, reporting tools and, and BI systems that definitely they are dedicated on that part and they can give us lots of informa information. So if that is your case, uh, if you already have a, a reporting or a BI uh, tool, definitely make the integration and use it in that part. Or in, in Mean Service Desk, first of all, as you all know, you can get any of this uh, view first to get an Excel or a CSV part that uh, I will talk to you about uh, the details of, of this um, 
columns later because that's also another feature for version three. That's that part. Second, the first level about talking about reporting, it is that here, I will take this one, of course. This, uh, the first thing is that you can do reporting based on tickets, based on assets or based on users. And then you put the name. The first part is that uh, we have available. Uh, one of the things that I was telling you is that we have defined to, uh, to define two things. First, let's talk about an example. I want to know how many tickets, how many incidents I have last month, okay? But remember two things. If I'm talking about how many, I'm saying about the number. So then the result is going to be a number, let's say 20. Okay, 20 is the result. But then that is different that I want to know the details of these 20. I want to know the list of each one of these 20 tickets. So then, and then for these 20 tickets, I want this, uh, the, the agent, the status, the company, the queue type, and so on and so on, and, and additional custom fields. So then it's two different things. Uh, one thing can be uh, um, graphic, the other one is just a list, okay? So that is the two options. So the first part is that when I talk about the ticket list, as you can see, there's plenty of all the possible fields that uh, you can use. One of the new features is that we used to have uh, some reporting, but now you can add any custom field uh, for the report. So this is a new part on the on the new version. And then as you can see, you just select uh, any of the fields and, and it's adding here on the list, okay? That is uh, how it works. Then the next part is that based on those fields, you can add some features like uh, just uh, very straightforward. How many uh, this year, okay? So I put the filter on date. How many from who I will put uh, this company or you can add more companies. That's also not a problem. Assignee, let's say I will leave it open. Uh, I, uh, I want to get all of them. Type, you can say, okay, request for change or any other type. You can also filter on that part. In this case, if it's an incident, then of course only incident type 10. Uh, from which queues? Uh, from service desk, for facilities, for, for which ones? And then you can select more or less, okay? So that is not a problem. And then also, if I want to use impact or other stuff, good. So then this is the part of add, add filter, good. And then later, the next step uh, uh, that we added for this new version is this grouping. This grouping is, okay, I have the results. And then how do I want to, to, to group by? I will do this first, of course, really quick. I will delete this grouping part, and then I will come how it was the report. I will click here to run the report and then uh, it runs it. And, and as you can see, it gives us the full list very quick, by the way. And with all the columns that I said uh, that it was going to, to provide this, of course, you can also export it in an Excel or a CSV file. And as you can see, these columns are the ones that I selected on to do it. But it's just the full list. Um, of course, um, there's plenty of things you can do and work on this one, but this is the, the second uh, level uh, that we can do. I will go back on, on editing this one and I will add these report groups. These report groups is also uh, based, uh, from the new version. And what I will do is that you can combine it because let's say I want to group them by state, by service, by the person who is assigned by priority because this will give me more information, all right? So, I will say it, I want to group it by uh, status first. I will click here on plus. I will add another group that uh, per creation date, maybe this is interesting. I want to add another one for per month, maybe it's fine, uh, add group. Then I want to add another one for service, maybe. Okay, service and what else? Maybe priority can be good. Okay, so that is uh, enough for the moment and I will save it. Now I will go back to my reports and I will run this one. So then you will see the difference, right? Now it's a group in a different way. I will click here on statics only and then it's telling me how much is the total. Of course, I put it by the day and, and then by, by month. So then if I uh, open here to give me more details, it's telling me, okay, in total, there is uh, for status in progress for all the list is 26%, so that is 19. And 
for uh, uh, that is not does not have any service uh, specified in the ticket and not a priority specified from January 2021. Do you see? So then for priority low in January, there is just one that is the 11%. Then uh, from March, then is uh, for non-service, non-service is uh, three, that was the three for uh, June. For this uh, service, priority medium is one and so on. So as you can see, it gives us the details on per service, per month, per priority. And then now you can interpret a different percent closed uh, from the other services and so on. So this is a completely new world of what is going on. This is also giving us uh, an Excel file. I will download it and then later I will show it to you, but it gives you this one. You don't need to, to, to copy and paste and create new rows or, or columns in the in the Excel. No, that is uh, going to give you exactly this, but uh, uh, already analyzed with, this, with these filters, okay? That's good. And then uh, what is going to come, because basically if I go back here, one of the couple of features that I will uh, explain to you later, but what we did is that uh, we are making a space. We did this and we did this. So as you can see, uh, we are making the dashboard bigger because the next step for those reports is that we will be able to create dashboards here and each agent will be able to personalize and put, uh, let's say a report and then a list of tickets and another uh, graphic and so on. So this is uh, uh, coming for um, the next uh, mid service desk version four. And this is what uh, we will have. So it's on the roadmap, as you can see, we already did some stuff because of that, okay? Uh, later, of course, if you want to know more about the uh, reporting, we can discuss it, but let's move forward on the rest. Um, then um, I think we, um, the Facebook Messenger is only that here on the communication channel. As you know, we have email channel, internal channel and internal note, but there will be one additional here for Facebook Messenger and you will be able to communicate uh, through that uh, line. In the roadmap also, uh, we will have a chat from web a JavaScript that you will be able to, to, to have it on your website that is going to be uh, integrated with, with the system. WhatsApp or uh, the Telegram or other is also possible if you need, okay? Good. So those are our, the ones, let me share again my, my um, presentation. Give me a moment. Those are the elements for the enterprise features. And now we can talk about um, the rest of the features for the version three, okay? So I will keep an eye on this list, but uh, just to make sure that we cover everything, okay? So, uh, and then we can come, go back to, to, to this part. So let me um, share my screen again. Good, let's go to the first one. The first one is notices. This notices is this one, it's a very cool feature. I will go on the admin side, just to show you what I'm talking about. So. Um, notices is notifications that uh, one of uh, the use case of this one is that let's say that we know that the um, uh, internet is down or this application is having a problem and we already know that so we don't want to answer to all the tickets or we want to, to explain to the users that they are logging into the portal that hey we already know about this problem or if you don't know, hey, please, the system will be in maintenance of this day and that day, okay? So notices is on the admin side. First, you put the title, you activate it or not, and then you can give a detailed a content that it will be in detail. I will say that the system will be on maintenance uh, during the week. Who can see it? You can put uh, agent, admin, customers, what portal can see it. It's valid from when to when. Right now, I have it valid just for these uh, demo purposes, but you can say, okay, it's valid for this period of time, okay? From to, okay? So then probably I, I move it, no, it's fine. Okay, so then, and then uh, some levels. Info, it's gonna be in blue, nice warning, as you saw in yellow or something big, please not uh, check it, then it's going to be in, in, in red. Always visible, yes. 
then uh sorry <laughs> i will something put um um will be in maintenance or uh, you can say uh um, alert something like that okay i'm just playing a little bit with the message so i would click on save and as you can see it is giving you the information and then if i click on details you can put a, a lot of the text uh if there is a need of course uh if you go on the customer side definitely the same thing will be displayed okay so you can decide who should uh, who should uh show this very good so that is uh notices then next one uh information about the size of the background extensions that's true it was probably the first one that it would be good because uh you just are just uh, seeing that there is a new uh login website there is a, a a new design on the login and so on and, and and the credentials so i will do that part right now so in the general settings here there's new options on the logo part is like you can uh, upload this logo too but as, as i said let's say mint system production or demo you know so then i can type whatever i want and i can put any color and then you will know that is a demo system just in case so this was not on the previous version you can put the size the font you can select it and the logo and we have some predefined as you can see background so if you want you can select some of our uh, examples of our backgrounds and do this change and this is going to be your new uh, logging website so uh, this is what I'm talking about good so let's let's do this and let's continue with the list because it's quite big and I want to cover everything support for anonymous connection of uh, SMTP one of the things is that uh, we have the the options on the creating um new um configuration of email of course we have uh different options but for for time to time because some customers they use uh the system or, or internet network they have trusted smtp and there is no need to use login credentials to to log in for sending emails because uh, you can include it in your whitelist in your trusted list and the system can send it, uh, can send emails with no need for authentication. So this is also possible. And then that is uh, the purpose of, the, of that new option. Okay, so that is the new feature. Then um, let me in the meantime, uh, while I breathe, I will deactivate this one. So nobody will think that is uh, something true. So that's fine. Then I will go back. Uh, now continue with my list uh out of the office feature very good feature uh i have one option one customer one agent that i created as an example that it was robert smith i, I already put it in in out of the office but i will show you where as you know we have the option for the profile and uh here out of the office is active yes from where to where good so then it's configured what happens next then uh on the daily operations, then um, I will log in with my other agent. Good. So then in here, um, any ticket, let's say this order laptop. So then I said, ah, yes, I will assign this one to Robert because he's the one who's working on, on this new laptop stuff. So I will click on create an option. And then I see Robert Smith is out of the office. So then he's giving me the message and I cannot assign it to him. So this is uh, out of the office option you are not uh, you will see that this agent is out of the office and you cannot assign a ticket to him good next one uh now if we go more on the detail on the service desk part custom field in dashboards very good feature as we know uh well first i will take the filters off off but one of our big big uh, um, features that uh, our customers love is that the multi forms and templates that you can create a lot of types and fields depending on the 
on the on the type of service that you select, then it shows or hides custom fields. That is uh, one of the features that uh, the customers most uh, like and enjoy from in service desk. But uh, 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 before it, it was the system was only displaying the standard the standard um, features for ticket numbers, object, the common ones, status, assignee, and so on. But right now you are able to completely change that and say no. Because let's say that uh, my my form is completely different. It's not IT. It's about something else. So then what I will do is that I want to add all the uh, custom fields. So as you can see, it's only also showing the custom fields. So then, of course, some of them don't have uh, information. But don't worry. This is just an example. But as you can see, I can create my, my and, I, and I want to display 100. So then. I can create a completely different dashboard that is not related to IT. It's about, let's say, cars or schools or whatever, laptops, anything. So then it is going to be completely different, OK? That is also possible. And then you are able to select any amount of, 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 the, of the columns. Also, some of them are now available for search, like ticket number, company user, assignee, and so on. OK, so that is. Uh, Another good feature, new feature that you are able to add custom fields in the um, in the dashboard. Next one, uh, custom fields in reports. I show you that before. Good uh, notification module with multi language ex extension. Also a good, good feature. I will go really quick on the admin side too, and then I will show you this uh, notifications. As you know. We can have tons of notifications about anything, about tickets, about assets. But uh, before it was only able to send in one uh, anything, but uh, just one. But right now you are able here, as you can see, to add multiple language. So then you can select, OK, uh, for English, please send this. Or if somebody has in Spanish, so then I will click on plus and it will add it. And then I can just here type uh, instead of uh, uh, dear customer, dear, uh, thank you for creating your, your ticket. I can say, estimado usuario, uh, gracias por su nuevo ticket. Después puede crearlo, no, lo que sea. So then it can be in Spanish or in any other language, definitely uh, for the rest of the world. So uh, I can add uh, many others. Okay, so you can save it and then you can do the same thing for the rest of the notification. So that is also possible. This is a demo system. And we avoid to send uh, emails from the demo, but in your own ticketing system, you have definitely more. Good. The next one, uh, custom fields required. Very good option. Uh, we have here uh, in asset management, but also in tickets. If you go to um, custom fields, I will go, let's say in this one, request for change. Then there is a new column here that you can say which ones are mandatory fields for your form. This is a very good feature that definitely many of you will enjoy. Okay, good. The same for assets. If you go on the asset management side, you can also find that as part of the option. Required, very good feature. Okay, that one is good. Next one, uh, custom fields. Uh, toggle tickets forward background from the details view. Also nice feature. In this case, I need to log in as an agent. I like this feature because it's when you are, let's say a manager, a coordinator, supervisor, something like that, that you know, uh, you you don't see a ticket from time to time. You want to, to have a quick view on, on each one, okay? So then, Let's say that I'm an agent, so then I see this ticket and then I see what happens. And then maybe uh, then I can go back and see this one. Okay, that's fine. But as a manager, you just have, you arrive in the morning, you have to want to make a quick view of each one. So in any view that is important, it can be in my widgets, let's say for incidents or anything, I can just click here. And then I see the ticket and then here there are a, a couple of our new ones for forward or backward. And then if I click, then I, it show me the next one and then the next one. So then I can I can be as a supervisor or somebody. OK, we look fine. Uh, an internal note 
and and talk about and and then instead of going to the dashboard and where I was, I don't remember. No, then I can just easily click on next one and see this one and say, hey guys, please work on this, you know. Or I can start uh, assigning it to myself and start talking to the customer, or I can go backwards to the previous one and so on. So for me, it's also very cool feature. Ready? Okay. Next one. Uh, I think we are going to make it almost on time, but I will uh, rush. 15 minutes to end. Uh, close related tickets, good option also. Let's say that I'm here, I will delete uh, clear filters. And then uh, I will do some, some view, let's say this one. And I will check if there is a related ticket. So yeah, this ticket is related to some other. So then if I close the ticket here, um, it's, um, solve, solve is closed in this case. What happens? The system Im uh, automatically opens uh, the view of the related tickets, as you can see, select related tickets to close. As, and if I want to close, let's call it uh, related tickets or child tickets, uh, in, uh, you can call it anyway. And then I can say, yes, if I'm closing this, definitely because this is fixed, Please this other, uh, close the, all these others or no. So then I will say cancel and that's it. But if if I would say um, yes, then it's possible to say yes, close. And then automatically, if I jump in into the other ones, the other tickets will be closed, okay? So uh, this is uh, what we are talking about uh, when we said uh, close related ticket, good. Now jump into the next one. Uh, extend the knowledge base to limit visibility for entries. Very good feature. Um, the team did a very good job, definitely. Uh, let me show you this. When we talk about the knowledge base is that before you were able to create uh, articles, display it, we have we can have uh, information on the most viewed, last added, last modified and sort these um, uh, articles. As you know, these gives you a, a solution at the moment that you're creating their tickets is very good. But uh, now as a second level, you can say, because let's say uh, I will call it um, uh, how to uh, assign tickets in mean service desk. Definitely this is internal for only for agents. So I don't want the end user or the customers to see this article. So. I can just remove companies and say share with everyone. No, only with agents, good. Or, you know, let's say, this is a, a very good example. Let's say that um, uh, we have a, a customer that uh, we provide them, they have two divisions, but in division one, we, we sell them internet and TV. And the other one, we, we, we sold them mobile, internet and TV, three services, two services. And of course, I don't want to share an article of a service that this agent, that this customer does not have, right? So then I can say, okay, if this is about, let's say mobiles, that is only for this customer in a specific, then I can select this customer. And then only this customer will have this FAQ article uh, available for him. So he is going to be, uh, he can see it. So this helps you a lot on the knowledge base, uh, who can see what uh, in different levels, okay? so. That is that part, very good feature. Good, then uh, what else? Uh, next one uh, for the asset management, very good that we can talk a bit about an uh, asset management. Create related tickets from the asset view. Very nice feature also because um, from time to time we are here on the asset management part and I will take this as an example. And then let's say that from here, uh, I need to, uh, create a ticket for maintenance for this for but i don't want to come here and and create a new ticket and and click on assets and find which one no uh, uh something uh faster so then i will go directly on the on the asset and then uh create related tickets so jump really quick type uh, request for change please maintenance or whatever you can type and then perfect really uh, create a ticket related to to the other asset okay so really quick there is nothing else 
to do really fast and that is related to the asset. So that helps a lot. This is a nice view as you can see that I can see the specifications, the additional information, warranty expiration date. So very good feature to start. Then uh, what else do we have on the list? Um, asset and company relation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I show you this already, but here, now you can define this is for this company, but for all the user and users or customers for belong to this company or no, I want to make it some more specific. So this means that uh, you are able to specify who can see the assets on, on, on their assets parts or as an agent also, that's also possible. Uh, what else? Custom fields require option. Yes, I mentioned that before for the uh, required custom fields, but definitely, as you can see, this uh, asset management part is growing. I think I'm going to take advantage to mention that we have uh, more surprises on the integration uh, with the discovery systems. Uh, uh, we have worked already with some integrations with our partner Land Sweeper, and at some point we will do a webinar about that. So there's plenty of things uh, to do everything uh, automated and in, uh, adding information, okay? So the asset history is also a new feature because now for the audit, it's very important to display and show, and show who did what, who changed what, when, and so on. So this is lots of uh, new features, okay? So I think in overall, we covered all the list. Um, definitely, as I said, if you want to know more, I can show it to you, but I want to spend some time on, on answering some questions and, and what's next, okay? So let me share again uh, my screen uh, for the presentation. And let's talk about going into the end, okay? Okay, so uh, last part, what's next? Uh, we released our version three in August. Our new version 3.1 is going to be released in October and version two is going to be released in December. Some of the things that I can mention about the next uh, following versions is that, as I told you, in version 3.1, we will have contract management. That is also going to be another uh, enterprise uh, feature that uh, you will be able to combine it with uh, SLAs and contracts because Definitely, as you know, you can have more than one co contract from the same customer with different SLAs from different services. So all this complex world will be solved with the new contract management feature that we will have that will combine and you will be able to use it uh, for many customers with different SLAs and calendars and everything. So this is something that uh, is coming in the near future. Also the automation feature that I told you, basically what is this is that Whatever uh, that an agent can do, the automation can do it, but automatically. If I change the value of a state, of a custom field, of anything, and this rule is an event that I want to assign it to this person, to approve this person, to move it to this queue, to change it, to close it, or anything, this is automation. Basically, do anything uh, uh, automatically based on possible events for the assets, for the tickets, and that part, okay? So those are the features that will come. Definitely we will improve uh, and, and add more features on the service desk uh, part, on the asset management uh, and more and more will come. Good, okay? So uh, what I told you before about the reports, the dashboards, uh, the customer portal improvements. So this is what is coming on the near future. So let's see if there is a, I will still have like a bit of like five minutes and then let's, uh, I will um, check if there is some question for somebody in a specific, then it will be great. In the meantime, while I uh, see uh, what are going to be the questions, definitely uh, I, first of all, I appreciate uh, everybody who joined. Thank you very much for sharing your time. I hope I was able to explain everything and show all the uh, the features and, and, and what is uh, new on the free version and the enterprise edition. As it says here, contact us at salesadmintersd.com and we can have a dedicated uh, demo and evaluation workshop or, told you or tell you more about uh, what is next uh, on the roadmap 
on the new events that we will come by the end of the year of next year uh, that we will be uh, together with you. So uh, if there is any um, question, uh, please feel free to, to ask, okay?